Gracias, Señor, por tu presencia. Padre, aquí estamos. We're here, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Te glorificamos, Señor. We glorify you, Jesus. We're all together in one mind and one accord, Lord, to celebrate you. Every day, Father God, we give you a thanksgiving. Every day, Father God, you are the great I am. Father God, we thank you and we honor you and we are united tonight. We thank you, mighty God, that what you have for each and every one of us tonight shall come, shall be fulfilled. I thank you, Father God. We lift up our nation. We lift up every soul in this area. Father God, in the name of Jesus, use us all, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And we all said amen. amen. Come on, give a shout out to Jesus Church. Want to welcome everybody. Come on, I just want you to get out of your seat real quick and greet your neighbor. Say, neighbor, tonight is your night. Come on, amen. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Want to welcome everyone that is joining us online. Do not disconnect. God's got something for you. Welcome to the house of Faithful Life Church, the place where your faith will come to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on. I didn't ask you to visit or preach. I just said to welcome them tonight. Let's get back to our seats. Amen, amen, amen. We are excited. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's go ahead and give it up for Evangelist Tommy and the team. Amen. Haven't they been a blessing? Well, guess what? We get to have them again tomorrow. It just gets better and better and better. Who knows what God's going to do, right? Right, Tommy? <laughs> Can you, I just got to look over there. Right, Tommy? Right, Alfredo? I mean, give it up. It, it hadn't been a blessing. How many of y'all have been coming? Did you all come for the outreach? For the soul winning? Come on. I've been seeing a couple. I've been, I've been, I've been watching. I've been watching. Amen. I'm telling you, it just takes one. Amen. God can just use one. That's all he needs. But God's going to do something. Amen. I mean, they came out. I mean, really, give them another shout out. I mean, they came out away from their families to come over here and partake into you. Amen. I bless you all. Thank you so much. Very grateful and all their team and everything. I'm excited. So please come out again tomorrow. I believe tomorrow you'll be also doing soul. Am I right? You'll be out tomorrow at 10 o'clock. You have, come on, it's a weekend. You all, they no excuse. It's the weekend. You can come, right, Veronica? We can come at 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. So winning. Come on, get out, get out, get out. Amen? And then come back at 7. And we're just going to see what God does last night. You know what I mean? Late in the midnight hour. I mean, God's going to turn it around for somebody. It just takes one. Get out of your doors. Amen? Those that are joining us online, you can just come on and join us as well. I'm excited. So remember, we never come to the house of God without a seed never 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 i know that apostle's gonna come give it up for apostle i'm not gonna call him just yet but remember 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 we never come to the house of god without a seed i am excited get your seed ready we're gonna do the tithe and the offering apostle's got a word for you for the church and then of course we're gonna do an offering as well for the evangelists and the team amen come on god is doing amazing things amen church we also have credit card in the back get yourself ready I'm excited because Jesus is in this place. Amen? Amen. So now I am going to call Apostle so we can go ahead and rise off of our seats. And let's give it up to the best Apostle in the house tonight. Apostle Sloan. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Come on, let the Lord know you're here. Let him know you're hungry, you're desperate. Let him know you're expecting. Let him know you're believing. Let him know, Lord, you won't pass me by. Come on, you won't pass me by, Lord. Lord, I came to receive something from you tonight, and I shall collect it. I shall collect what belongs to me. Amen. Hallelujah. I was going through, you know, we all hear the uh, story of, of, of the son that just uh, said, Dad, you know, I want my stuff. And uh, the father said, okay. The Bible says he divided his kingdom and he gave his son everything that was his inheritance. And the Bible says that he went into the world and he spent that inheritance. Hey, isn't that interesting? The Bible says that he came back with nothing and the father received him. Amen. 
And the Bible says that he put his coat on him, he put a ring on him, and he loved him anyway. But it was the one on the inside that had an issue. <laughs> Can I tell you why? Because the one on the inside didn't have a revelation. <laughs> Somebody say, I'm going to get my revelation tonight. I said, I'm going to get my revelation tonight. The one on the inside didn't have a revelation. Because when, when the, the prodigal son returned and he had nothing, he, he spent everything in the world, eh? lost it all, came back to the father and the father greeted him and loved him. And the Bible says that he said he killed the fatted calf and he, and he threw a big party. And the one that was always there was angry and said, why would you do this? Because he has plundered everything you gave him, his inheritance. Eh? And the father said, uh, what's the matter with you? <laughs> what's the matter with you? Why are you angry? Your, your brother was lost and now he's found. Why are you mad? Somebody say, why are you mad, bro? <laughs> the father was saying, why are you mad? Why are you mad? Because we're celebrating the life of your brother who was lost, but now he's found. Eh? And he said, well, you we haven't done anything for me. And I've been here the whole time. And the father said, don't you know <laughs> that everything I have is yours too? You just haven't asked. Oh, 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 oh. Somebody had the audacity to collect, to connect, even though they lost it. Ah, the other one had no revelation to say, my God. What he has actually belongs to me and it belongs to me now. Now. What good are you going to do with what God has for you when heaven is open for you? When you wake up on the other side of the grave and you have no money to spend because you don't need to spend no money. But on this side, all that the Father has is available to you. Amen. Tell your neighbor, all you need is a revelation. And then you need to participate with that revelation. Amen. Somebody say participation is what heaven is looking for. I said heaven is looking for participation. Tap your neighbor, tell him heaven is looking for participation. Heaven is looking for participation. Once you receive revelation, you put it to work and you begin to participate. And in your participation, you begin to move the hand of God in your life. Somebody's moving the hand of God tonight. Somebody's moving the hand of God tonight. Your faith is alive. Your faith is on fire. Your anticipation is moving the hand of God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, even in my finances, money has no control over me i control money it doesn't tell me what i can and cannot do oh no it is thus saith the lord if the lord says go we go hallelujah obadiah 117 i love this scripture and i want to release it to you because once you begin to participate and once you begin to do what heaven says this is how you access these things we have prophetic words somebody say prophetic words i don't like to call them promises because many of us are used to promises that are broken uh, so when we collect the word of god as a promise we have issues in our heart of many broken promises out there but if we can see it as a prophecy that thus saith the lord this word shall be just as god said it you shall collect on it amen somebody say he's prophesying to me Obadiah 117, but on Mount Zion, somebody say, where are we standing? In the Jesus nation, in the territory of Jesus Christ, in the city of Mount Zion, he said, there shall be deliverance. Somebody say deliverance. Somebody say, be set free. Being set free is aha, when you transition between territories. What used to hold you in the old territory cannot hold you in the new territory. I said, what used to hang you up in the old territory can never touch you in the new territory. When you enter into Mount Zion, what used to break you down and hold you down has no power over your life. But on Mount Zion, there shall, shall, somebody shout, shall. There shall, not maybe, not maybe, not maybe, not maybe, not maybe, not by chance, but there shall be somebody shall shall be shall be 
there shall somebody say shall be I want you to fix your mind on the word there shall be oh, somebody say I'm entering my shall be I'm walking in it right now there shall be freedom there shall be deliverance every yoke shall be broken it is for sure that every yoke shall be broken and every stronghold shall come down in your life somebody say I know where I'm standing I'm standing on Mount Zion I'm not lost in the city I'm in the house of the Lord I'm standing in the city of God and there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness oh that's not a bad word that's beautiful I said it's not a bad word <laughs> it's a beautiful word hallelujah because holiness also has to do with completeness that means what's been missing in your life shall be completed in your life when you're on Mount Zion. And then it says the house of Jacob shall possess there. Who's? Who's there? Is anybody there? I, I'm looking for somebody. Yeah, I'm looking, are you there? Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? So, who, 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 who? I know there's a lot of them days and this, but who's there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the house of Jacob shall possess what? I can't hear nobody. I can't hear nobody. Uh, somebody say mine, 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 mine. Somebody say it's mine. Oh, come on, come on, Nemo. Mine, 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 mine. Oh, yeah. I know y'all have children watch that, that Nemo movie. Mine, 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 mine. There are things that are yours that belong to you they are your inheritance and they're meant for you to possess when when I, I, when 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 do you possess them uh when you discover you're standing in mount zion now you have power to possess what belongs to you the house of jacob shall possess their possessions it says their possessions that means there are many things allocated to your life uh by what Jesus did for you not through your boss not through your career not through working the system out there but you knowing who you are in Christ Jesus your faith will take you to a position of receiving what used to possess others is actually your possessions y'all didn't hear me I don't think they heard me I don't think they heard me. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these things that the world is possessed by shall be added unto you. Somebody say, added unto me. And that means we don't go after those things. Those things come after us because we're running for Jesus. We want the Lord. We want not only the Lamb of God, we want the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We desire the fullness of Jesus Christ. And when we go after him with all our heart, he said all these things will be added, added, added. They will begin to show up at your door. They'll begin to show up in your house. They'll begin to show up at your bank account. Because you're participating. Somebody say participate. And I'm just going to put this because it's the next scripture. Whenever you're ready to give, it's up to you. Somebody say it's time to participate. Can we just touch 18? Because I, I, I saw this. I said, I can't leave this out. <laughs> and the house of Jacob shall be a what? It shall be a what? Shall be a what? Somebody say, I know what's coming. Somebody say, I know what's coming. Somebody say, I know what's coming. Somebody say, a fire. A fire, a fire, a fire shall fall on my house. A fire shall fall on my family. A fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost shall fall on my money, on my marriage, on my children, on everything that I have to do with in my life. A fire, somebody shout a fire. Shall fall on the house of Jacob. Hallelujah. And the house of Joseph shall be a flame. But then it says the house of Esau. <laughs> we'll leave that one just for you right there. <sighs> That's all the false things. All the fake things. All the plastic things. All the false things. They shall become 
stubble. <sighs> and they shall kindle them and devour them. You can leave it right there. The fire of God that hits your life will hit your family, hit the money, all the things around you, everything. God doesn't leave anything out. And that everything is fake that doesn't belong in your life will just be consumed. I said everything that is not real, everything that has no eternal value, everything that has no value in the kingdom of God will find itself burnt out. Glory to God. Somebody lift your hands to heaven and say, that's the Lord for me. I said, that's the word for me. That's the word of the Lord for me. My house shall catch fire. My life shall catch fire. Everything that has to do with my life shall burn for Jesus Christ. Whatever is fake, whatever is false shall burn away. But only the true and living Savior shall be found in the fire with me. Hallelujah. Somebody celebrate the Lord as you give tonight. Amen. Let us worship God. Let us worship God. Oh, wandering into the night. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This vagabond. I tried with all my mind, but I could not when the fine was slowly drifting. A black one oh, from now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back.
levántate, sal de esa tumba, sal de esa tumba, sal de esa tumba, levántate, sal de esa tumba, sal de esa tumba, sal de esa tumba, levántate, sal de esa tumba, sal de esa tumba, sal de esa tumba, levántate, sal de esa tumba, sal de esa tumba. Come on, declare it up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Oh, his life, he is so longer to get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Right now, you are being set free. 
in the presence of the Lord wherever you're watching wherever you are I feel the Spirit of God saying just tap in right now just connect right now because that power is moving to you to snatch you up out of that grave snatch you up out of that darkness snatch you up out of that pain that sorrow that disappointment that thing is over that grave can't hold you no more Come on, somebody's rising out tonight. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Listen, listen, don't stop. But listen, there's somebody here. I don't know. I see something between the knee and the ankle. Man of God, am I okay? But I need to pray for somebody. There's something going on between the knee and the ankle. I'm looking, it's like right here. If you need to come, you need to come now. I'm looking at the Lord touching your body. It's right in here. Something is taking place. I, I don't know what this is. Come now, hurry. The healing power of God is moving. Fire! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. Huh? I'm telling you, something is taking place. So cold. Shabbat. Fire, Joshua. Now go, 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 Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Somebody else should get out of that grave. Should be blessing the Lord right now. Come on, come on, come on. Take your healing, take your freedom, take it by force, take it by the force of faith right now. You don't have to sit in here suffering, you don't have to sit in here in pain. Let's get out that all that out of the way so when the fire falls, you're not thinking about what was hurting you, but you're entering in to another realm of the glory of God. This healing power just moving. I see like a whirlwind. I see like a whirlwind. You got two shots of fire. I see like a whirlwind moving in the realm of the spirit. I see heaven open. Somebody should collect right now. Oh, just pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. when you entered here that pain is leaving your body right now if you were suffering when you entered here that suffering is leaving your body right 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 now right now right now fresh wind blow fresh wind blow pour it all out fresh wind blow fresh wind blow fresh wind blow pour it all out fresh wind blow fresh wind blow somebody say thank you lord Somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just go ahead and take a nice lap. Because the devil was just trying to cripple you up. He was trying to cripple you up. He can't, he can't, he can't. He can't. I said he can't, he can't. He cannot, he cannot. He cannot, he cannot curse what God has blessed. Somebody should say, that's me. I'm the blessed of the Lord. Somebody say, I'm the best of the Lord. Because he saved the last wine. Which is the best wine. Which is us in him. Hallelujah. I just 
just felt somebody's back pain just fly out. I don't know who that was, but you should. I just saw it come out. Somebody should collect that right now. I see it right now. Somebody said, "Who is that?" Huh? I saw that back pain just fly out like, hey, like you scared a bunch of birds. Just wow, go. Somebody said that was. I know it's over there. You should check yourself because it was right here on this side. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it's right in there. It's right in there. Who, who, there was some kind of pain. Huh? What, what, what you doing? Come here. What you doing? Huh? You see, because if you don't respond, they think I'm just making it up. Uh, you see, if you don't respond, they think I'm just making this stuff up. Because anybody can make up something when there's no responses. Oh, that's all right. I'll, I'll keep those. You can have your healing. I'll keep my glasses. touch your toe move around somebody shout Jesus he is my Lord he's my Savior he's my healer he's my deliverer he is the lion of the tribe of Judah Can y'all can y'all run like that too? Uh -huh. I'm talking about running for Jesus, hey. Oh, it's getting hotter, man. Oh God, I, I want to make sure you don't have to. Fresh wind blow, fresh wind blow, pour it all out. Fresh wind blow, fresh wind blow, fresh wind blow. Anybody believe the Lord to heal this man? Anybody believe the Lord just healed that man? Do you know we really didn't pray that she just ate it? Can I help you? There's a place where you actually don't really have to pray. You just got to learn how to eat. I want to teach you how to eat. I just want you to eat the things of God. We should eat, 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 eat. 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 He said, I am the bread of life. Come in like a hurricane. Rush me, Rush me, Rush me, Keep pouring all I saw somebody's right eye like I saw somebody's right eye like blink, 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 blink. I see something coming out. I don't know who that is, but it's like the right eye. And I see their eye like blink, 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 blink. And there's something coming out of your eye. I don't know who you are, but if, but if it's you, you should run. But there's something going on with the right eye. I don't know, maybe they're watching, maybe they're here. But I see it like coming, there's something coming out. Woo! I'm waiting for you. You better check online. Because we can be in both places. It's like we're in the same room with people that are watching. Uh, somebody sitting on the black couch. You're sitting there. I'm looking. There's a table on your right. I see a lamp. A lamp. It's got like this wood. Hey, it's, it's like it's like it's a, like a wooden. Uh, I don't need, hey. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I see a square lampshade. I see this like wood. It's like wood. It's like reddish. It's like reddish brown. Yeah, it's like uh, interesting. I don't want to say it's carved. I want to say it's manufactured in some way. But you're on a black couch. You're sitting there. I see a lamp to your right. I see a lampshade. I want to say the lampshade is almost like a, like a cream color. Rokata. But maybe that's you. Because I saw something coming out of somebody's eye right now. In fact, when I looked at your feet, I saw a white rug. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, we should, we should prophesy. We should prophesy. Oh, 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 oh. We should pick people up and put them right where they belong. Hey, hey, hey. How's that feel? 
Somebody say thank you, Lord. Somebody say oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh we finished. We're ready to go to the next level. I'm just knocking on the door. Because a man of God carries the next level. I, I'm not an idiot. I know when a mighty man of God comes, I'm simply the introducer to the next level. Yeah, yeah. See, you got to know when you're John the Baptist and you're not Jesus. You got to know your position and place and you do your part and hand off. I want to help somebody because it all, it takes all of us to produce what God desires to produce in these last days. And we simply take our place and let others do their work. I want to help somebody because only Jesus is the hero. I said only Jesus is the hero. I said only Jesus is the hero only Jesus and everybody has their place glory to God somebody say the introducer yeah. well I just want to introduce you to another level are you hungry yet introduced to another level are you ready to go somewhere in the Lord if he said in my father's house there's many mansions maybe they're not for you to live in maybe they're dimensions for us to go to while we're on earth maybe they're realms and dimensions that we enter to bring that to the earth just a question so maybe this is a mansion Maybe this man of God is a mansion and he's fully furnished to what God wants you to have. Oh, somebody better hear what I just said. In my father's house are many mighty mansions that are decorated and loaded for you to enter in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We must learn again. The operation that's another day maybe but I want to introduce a mansion in the kingdom of God and I want you to receive this mansion because he said in my father's house are many mansions dimensions realms empowerments revelations that are released for us to collect from and live a higher level while we're here Oh, you hear somebody you see now are your eyes open stop waiting for heaven when heaven has arrived stop waiting to go to heaven when heaven is now right here are you ready to receive the man of God let's receive this revivalist this evangelist uh, Tommy Zito come on receive him with honor to the Lord hallelujah glory of God's all over this room. Just come on and step over tonight. This place. place that was purchased for you. There's no place on earth like it. Just close your eyes. And come on up to the realms of glory today. You'll see, you'll hear, you'll know. 
There's no depression there. There's no worries there. There's no anxiety there. It's perfect peace. There's unspeakable joy. Come on up to Catch us up, God. Carry us away tonight. And he carried me away in the spirit. And he carried me away to a great and a high mountain. Great and high mountain. To the mountain. To the mountain, the mountain of the Lord, perfect vision there, I hear the Spirit of God say, come on up, come on up church. But Lord, come on down, God. We need you now, Lord. Come down. But I hear the Spirit of God saying, come on up, church. Come on up now, 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 church. They need you now. Come on up now. Come down, God. Come up, church. Come down now, Lord. You must. Come on up now, church. You must, you must, you must. Come, come, come. heavenly places thank you Jesus thank you Jesus just heard two things while I was standing there when John was on this place he, he said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day what this man of God was taking us into the spirit just lift your hands and just that realm is more real than this realm that realm is more real it's eternal it's perfect that's why he's saying you just have to eat it it's already there it's already made manifest it's yours a table is set before in the presence of your enemies just got to eat all the lamb. There's no striving in this realm. There's no begging. It's the realm of God. It's the realm of faith. 
You just believe and you just receive. The glory is here. You can sense His mighty presence in this very atmosphere. So whatever you may need, you just reach out and just receive. Say it's mine. I take it now. John is in this realm and wrapped in his power, he described it. Caught up in the realms of glory. That phrase, and he and he took me up and he and then he carried me away in the spirit. John was there exiled. The church was being persecuted. Christians were being killed. All the disciples were martyred. And he's on the Isle of Patmos and he doesn't look good in the natural. Maybe you look at what's happening and it doesn't look good. Maybe you see your life and it doesn't look good but the angel came and said come up here come on up and he took him up and he saw the glory of God and he saw the most precious jewels the greatest ones on earth What he looked like in his natural eye wasn't really what was. It was something so much greater and better and sweeter. Just reach out in the atmosphere of God. He's already done everything for you. Everything's waiting for you. Just receive everything. Everything you could ever imagine. It's all yours. Because it's all His. The second thing that I heard while I was up here, I looked at the wall and I I I didn't see the words faith for life. I I actually had to touch my eye. I was touching my eye because I, I thought I didn't see faith for life. I saw these words. This is a house of David. This is a house of David. Put your hand on your heart right there. Stay with me from the book of Zechariah. He said, in that day, everybody say it loud, that day, shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The Lord's coming to the defense of the body of Christ. The Lord is going to show his hand strong. He's looking for for, for all over the earth for those that will believe him and trust him. Do not fear and worry. God is not sitting in, in his throne worried about anything that's happening. As if God is not God on the throne. The best the enemy could do, it says that God laughs at famine and destruction. It'd be wise to hang out with him and do the same. He laughs at the greatest the enemy could do. That's why the cross message is so powerful. That's why this this final move of God is going to come. First one of the cross wins. Because the Bible says if the enemy knew... If the enemy knew, he would have never, he would have never, he would have never, he would have never, he would have never put the thing that was going to crush him into the ground. 
why when you die, you live. That's why God said, don't look at people's faces. Don't try to be popular. Tell the people what I did for them. Ask them if they'll do the same for me. There's only one way to serve God on this earth, and that is all the way. Everything you got. We apologize on behalf of the American church that has perverted the gospel, that has made us to think it's something else. There's only one way to serve Jesus Christ, and that's with everything you got. Thank God for, just thank God for this couple. Just thank God for this couple. You have no idea what you have here. These are unique individuals. Someone that doesn't, I, I, I'm, I'm around, and he's just not thinking like normal beings are thinking. And thank God for that. Because he hasn't been perverted by an American system. Come on, I'm being straight with you here. He hasn't been tainted. God's kept him in the cleft of the rock and there's only one way to serve God. Only one way to serve God. I used to get up and say, if you can't tithe, it's like you slapping Jesus right in the face. Psst. What kind of Christianity do you have? What kind of rape do you want to do to God? I mean, when we get straight, do you know they, there was a book from Good to Great? It's one of the best business books great principles the guy studied fortune 500 companies the biggest companies google apple and here's what he he, he dissected them and he said he, he used like a plane going down a runway and he wanted to see how these these companies took off and the plane going down the runway and there's all steps as the company's being formed and and these are the biggest companies in the world and he said it came right to the point before that thing pulled up and he said the last thing in every one of these companies was that they had to deal with they had to deal with the toughest stuff they ever dealt with and they had to make the hardest decisions that they ever had to make but when the companies that did it did it that jumbo jet took off and it became google and it became apple come on and it became what we walk in today but it had they had to first confront come on and the body of Christ is there right now. We've watched this over the last couple of years and all this stuff come in. And we saw people like, like terrified of a virus. Like, hachu, wow, people were like. <laughs> Shut down. You, you can't have church. You can't, hold on, you can't sing in church. Doesn't take long to discern. Sometimes God makes it obvious when the enemy is saying that. Just in case people can't really discern deep, just for our for the low discernment levels, God made it so obvious to see what we're, what this whole thing is about in this world right now. Come on, raise your hand if you're with me. Everything that is can be shaken is being shaken. It was one one nation that hadn't been shaken yet. And we are seeing the very shake. He said, I'm going to shake, ready? All nations. He, that means America too. See, I, don't, I tell pastors all the time, get out of your American mind. I travel the whole world. Come on. People can't come to a meeting, and people will go in some of these, not just Africa, Asia. They'll, 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 they'll come three, four. I go to Sri Lanka. They'll drive nine hours through the night to get to the meeting. No sleep, no nothing. They'll eat a bar, a bar at a gas station, you know, just a candy bar, whatever. Just, they don't care. Come on, raise your hand if you're with me. Just... And this is what I heard. Look, in that day, the Lord is going to defend. God is about to flex his muscles. And he that is feeble among them, come and put your hand on your heart, shall be, I like this, like David. Now we read the scriptures, I said last night, sometimes we forget the humanity of it. This is David. This is a unique individual too, David. David is taking out as a teenager a lion and a bear. Now I don't know 
if you've ever seen a lion and a bear my friend was just in Africa recently and a lion got loose into the village on the outside and the lion roared and dogs had heart attacks and died in the village one roar of the lion dead dogs I know sorry for the dogs but I'm going to get an email on that from some, some puppy lover somewhere. And then a bear. They had a movie recently they made about a bear. And the bear was like eating people or whatever. And, and I, I heard the people that now there's a new phobia about bears from that movie. And here's David. And he, how many believe the scriptures? I believe it. David took out the lion and the bear. And then he goes, this uncircumcised Philistine will be just like them. And so the Bible says, he that is feeble among them, like Gideon, the last likely we said, shall be like David. Everybody say David. And the house of David, ready for this? Come on, put your hand on your heart. Shall be like God. When John the Baptist walked, you know what they said? Are you the Messiah? What a compliment. He never, he never, he never parted the waters. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, he didn't call fire down on, on, on a mountain, on Mount Carmel. He never raised the dead. Why did Jesus Christ call John the Baptist the greatest man born of a woman up until us in the kingdom? What, what made that guy the greatest man? That's a massive statement for Christ to make about a Baptist. No, it's got to be a charismatic. He, it's got, are you sure you missed the charismatic, you know? Because John the Baptist understood the kingdom, that I must decrease and so he must increase. He understood you don't just give one, you give another. Come on, keep your hand on your heart there. Said Paul, Barnabas carried the glory of God that they thought they were God's. You can carry this glory. And God said in the last days, that's what this is going to look like. The house of David shall look like God. That's why he said, unless two agree, they can't walk together. So he, you have to, if you want to walk with Christ, if you really want to walk with Christ, it's going to cost you everything. You don't have, not a lot of leaders will ask you to pay everything. There are not a lot of leaders that will sit there, take a little bit of a uh, couple bad emails and take a little sour faces because they actually love you enough to tell you the truth. What we've made this cotton candy feel good. Feel good church people want to come in and have, there's beach balls going around, there's cotton candy. Everyone wants to do life. Nobody wants to actually die to their life. They want to give, they want to do life. Let's do life together, bro. I said, I don't do life. I, 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 I died in my life. That's what I want to do. Just do life and let's have a mocha cappuccino together. And that's why we have a powerless church being ignored by a perishing world. And we got a church on every corner and our nation is dissolving before our eyes. But listen to me. The Lord said in the last days, the house of David shall look like God. The tabernacle of David. The key of David. David is what? Worshipper by night? He's a, how many know David's a worshiper? David's the guy showing up Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. David's a king. He's got everything. But when you read his writings, it seems like he's got nothing because he's after something. He's after. He's got, a, he's got an unbelievable revelation of the beauty of God and the goodness of God. And the more that he got the goodness is he says this. Come on, touch your flesh there. Stay with me. My flesh longs for you. Your spirit gets born again. Your mind's got to get renewed. But you can get to the point, like David said, where my flesh longs for you in a dry and a thirsty land where there's no water. I'll give no rest, no sleep, no slumber. 
until my God comes down and brings a habitation. This is the characteristics of the divinity. I saw the words, uh, uh, apostle, it didn't say faith for life. It said, this is a house of David here. There's Davids being raised up here. There's crazy worshipers. And a new level and a new dimension. And, and then there's, wor- come on, worship. And then God sent me in Ephesians 4, signs and wonders evangelists to release this second part. Now worshiper by night and warrior by day. Who is this circumcised Philistine? Who is this? He's going to defy the living God. He's going to know that there's a God in Israel. Houston needs to know there's a God here. Watch what it says. And then it says this. Watch this. Stay with me. This, I saw two things. Your life might look like a wreck and you might look like stuff going on, but there's more than meets the eye. It said after you sow. We don't teach, we don't teach that. So we're, we're a product of an American theology. And it says, and we'll know him and the power of his resurrection. And they stop. But it actually says, and the fellowship of his suffering. says after you have suffered a while after you suffered a while after you go through some hell see Jesus didn't die so we wouldn't have to only he died to show you how to that the only way to the crown is through a cross and so when we're baby Christians I've been in this thing since I'm three you're baby Christians and you realize that you understand foundationally Jesus died for me he took everything from me he that knew no sin he became a ransom for my life and I become the righteous and I get all the goodies and, and you enjoy all the goodies in life and get it all get all the stuff get the, get the Mercedes get, the, get all the blessing I had it all not a lot of people can stand in front of you million, multi-million dollar houses handed jets handed millions handed and everything that anybody could ever want. Tele- television. They threw everything at me. I've been in the largest production companies, the largest publishing companies, and they said, we're going to make you, we're going to make you, we like your look, your style, you're, you're going to be, and I knew what they were trying to make me. I only have one maker, thank you. Get your hands off me. Because that, we're going to make you, and that American thing, and that, look at what it's created. Look at the catastrophe that it's created. You have a candlestickless church. You have a church in its form, but no fire. And because there's no fire, there's no glory. And because there's no glory, there's no people. That's why you go from 90%. Come on, do it with me. 90, 70, 30, 15 four but things are changing and here's what he says at the end he says I'm going to pour on the house of David like a waterfall I want you to catch this keep your hand on your heart I know it's an important part of your life because out of your heart flow the issues of life that's what he says he says I'm going to pour like a waterfall. There's a move of God that's beginning, it's here, and it's it's never going to end. Because it's not based on a man, it's not based on a manifestation, it's not based on a, a, a group of people, it's, it's, it's based on God is going to pour like a waterfall. You know, if you come with me, one of the places, one of my prayer places I go to is a place called Niagara Falls. How many people here have ever been to Niagara? Anybody? You guys got to come on some of these trips with us. And um, they call it the roar of the Niagara. Because you could be a few miles and miles away and you could hear the raging water just crushing down. So God, uh, uh, this passage I love, that that he's going to pour in the end times on. Everybody say on. God doesn't pour it out and then we become it. We actually become it. And and Italians know about wine. I don't drink wine. never touched alcohol since I'm 19 years old. I don't care to. I don't 
preach personal convic- conviction. You get full of God and you, you, I don't look at the scriptures and go, how can I get away with something? I look at the scriptures and say, how can I look like Jesus? Because that's all I want. I want to conform back to his image and his likeness. Come on, that's the goal. Not to jump, not to shout, but to actually conform into the image of Christ. You get so full of him that you love. I walked out to my church one time on an Easter Sunday. It was Easter Sunday. You know, it's the only time that I have notes. You know, I preach extemporaneously. I just show up. God already changed my message tonight from the time I got here. I'm gonna... And I had all my notes. It was Easter Sunday. You have a church. Everybody's coming, you know. And I walked up, and, I, and the Lord just hit me. We, we, we were teaching on the blood and the glory. Everything's dressed in red and white, the whole place. And, and I heard these words. Because how many of you, you'll die for Jesus? Right? Help me, Lord, tonight. How many of you die for your kids? I got three little ones. You'll get to meet them at some point in this journey as we. How many of you die for your husbands? <laughs> there were some slower hands there. But they were kind of like. Somebody's like, I'm going to pray about that, Brother Tommy. I need a 21-day fast before I... Watch, we'll get it right. How many husbands will die for your wives? Come on, quick. Quick, guys, quick, quick. All right. Wise men around here, eh? And I walked to the pulpit, and the Lord said to me, Would you die? Come on, put your hand on your heart. Would you die for Judas? Here's what he said. You'll never be like Jesus until you can die for your Judas. So I thought revival was about screaming and jumping. No, no, I realize that when you, this is how you know you passed from death to life, by your love for the unlovable. Can you take the bullets and the arrows from somebody betraying you with a smooch? How many of you, watch this, watch this. How many of you have been betrayed in this world? Raise your hand. Look at the hands. So, no, we're not alone. All of us have been betrayed. Some of us have been betrayed bad. Come on, raise your hand. Lots and lots and lots. I could write betrayal books after betrayal book after betrayal books. Also can do the same. But listen, that's why that happens in our life because you'll never know what it's like to be like Jesus until you can die for your Judas. And that's the love that ain't nobody can duplicate and that's the love that will melt the whole world the sinners one of the prayers we're praying for you this weekend is that you would be so baptized in love pray for you I don't know pray for your enemies anybody with me so far I just I know I'm all over the map but don't worry it all work out pray for those that hurt you Bless those that persecute you. Do good to those. Why? You know what it says? So you can be like your Father. And when we come into this unity movement now, where we have to come together for the sake of the greater good and the greater cause, the cause of Christ and the cause of we have to rise above all of our stuff. we got to just rise higher. Listen, last thing, just for, for you personally. Don't let anything have a hold on you. Nothing is worth it in this world. Nothing is worth it. And I know, listen, I say that light. I say that like it's a light thing to say. No, we're talking. I know there's some heavy, 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 heavy things that have happened to many of us in this room. Things that are unimaginable. But come on, put your hand on your heart. That's what he's going to put the heart of Jesus in your life you're going to see the best in every person. That's what it says, love. As my dad read this over me, uh, 1 Corinthians, he read it over to me every day, every day. I'd watch him evangelize to Jews, and they would just just melt. I'd watch him evangelize to Jehovah Witness, who are the nastiest folks sometimes. That's how you know they have no idea who Jehovah is. 
Because God is love. Man, they're not even nice. They don't even reject you nice. And I'd watch him melt. Why? It was the love. Love never fails. Love never fails. Love never fails. The devil can't get near somebody that's walking in love. Are you with me? Almost done. I'll let you be seated. If you go with me to Niagara Falls, it doesn't matter what day you go visit the falls. The water's coming down. You can go on the holiday. It's coming down. During COVID, it came down. It didn't matter what day, what time you go in the middle of the night. The falls are lit up with LED lights now. You go early morning. That's when I pray. The falls are pouring down. What's the point? The point is that God said prophetically that in the last days, he was going to pour out like a waterfall. That means the waters ain't never stopping. What's going to happen in Houston in this beginning, it's never, it's just going to be, it's just going to keep on coming. And the more we get, the more we want. The more David got, the more he seemed to want. I thirst for you, Lord. As the deer pants after the water brook, so my soul pants for you. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. My eyes fail while I wait for my God as I cry out. And so water, everybody say water. My dad was a scientist. He was an Ivy League graduate, so he was a smart, smart cookie. And he was a scientist. I didn't do good in science. I, that's not my thing. And, um, but there's, do you know when, 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 when the Lord speaks about the last day move of God, it's always in the form of water or rain. I'm going to pour out my spirit. And how many know the only hope for America is the outpouring of God? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. No politician could withstand the powers of hell that are coming. Only a move of God. And it's beginning. You can see it. It's rumbling everywhere. How many sense that? It's rumbling everywhere. Nominal people are getting thirsty now. But there's a cycle of rain. There's a cycle of rain and water. I didn't know that. If you would ask me, where does rain come from? I'd say, it comes from up there. But do you know where rain comes from? down here and it's pulled up in the earth's atmosphere it's held in a cloud it's a little bit more sophisticated than this but this is layman's terms and a wind comes by and blows what's in the cloud back down here's the principle whatever went up is what's sent down so there is a new wineskin the wineskin gets created first. The, 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 the church is the, 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 the American church wineskin is, is not capable of handling the outpouring of God that is coming on the earth in these last days. They're not capable of it. They're, they're, and you, we'll come here and then, and then we'll have something. It's not capable. God is breaking the mold. This church is breaking the mold. Come on, reach out all over this place before we cut up us. And, 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 uh, A hunger that hurts. A hunger that hurts. A thirst that hurts. That you just got to have water. You just got to have it. Can't even function without it. It's a hunger that hurts. That leaves me restless. chasing after you God house of David sons of David key of David spirit of David tabernacle of David takers out of Goliath unlockers of the army of God David it's a hunger that hurts.
David's. It's a house of David. It's a house of David. For more, God. The more, the more, the more. They just keep asking for more. The God chasers. For more, for more. So much more, church. Press and push and cry and ask. Give until it hurts. Give until it hurts. Because that's what he did. Go and go and go and go. Go hard, follow hard. Give your best. Give them your best. No rest, no rest, no rest. Listen, listen to this. One more. Put your hand on your heart. Listen to this. Do you know what the, the, the David, the greatest thing about David? David's got an enemy trying to kill him and destroy him. And the Bible says he's being chased by thousands of men. From a guy that he served and poured his life into. You talk about betrayal? That is the highest level. The guy's trying to slaughter him. And he was out. He's on his way and he stops because something happened. God created a distraction. So he couldn't go. And it let David go to this place called En Gedi, the place of the goat. That's why it's the message of the goat, the greatest probably of all time right here. Because all of a sudden they were going to slaughter David and his men. And Saul comes. This is how God works it out. And he comes and and Saul's got to go into this cave. Just so happened to be that cave. And he's going to just take a rest in that little cave. And inside that cave, David is hiding. He brought his enemy right to him. You know that? But the, you talk about a greatest of all time moment. David's guys were like, this is the moment that the prophecies are. You're going you're gonna to smoke this guy right now. We're, never, we're not going to die. We're, we're, the God's giving him into our hands. That's not in the scriptures, by the way. We have no record of that word coming forth. The only th- thing that David said is, I'm not going to touch what God's touched. And he does something. Come on. I'm talking to you about revival. I'm talking to you about what a follower of Jesus Christ looks like. This is not the revival of just the, what we think. There's going to be a revival. Let me tell you. This is the revival where you sign up to die. This is the revival when God brings your enemy right to you and you're ready to take that sword out and smoke them. Do you know what? This is what you did instead. He he cut a piece of cloth instead and he went out and he goes, I could have got you. Do you know know, know that's that's a higher level right there? Because anybody out of his own flesh could have reacted and just killed him and took. He went like this, look, I could have. He was showing him, this is why I'm chosen to be king. This is why the anointing was pulled off of you. Come on, are you with me? I'm telling you, this is not seen. This is the kind of walk that God wants to have you walk with him. And do you know what happened? David never had to take out his enemy. His enemy took out himself. His enemy killed himself. 
You didn't have to do it. David did it the right way. And when you do it God's way, when you do it God's way, he went to the slaughter and he opened not his mouth. I saw that picture in Revelation. He said, the Lamb of God, and he, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And he turned and you know what he saw? He saw a lamb. Saw a lamb. Close your eyes right there and just forgive. Forgive whoever it is you need to forgive right this second. Just release. I'm talking about release. Talking about complete release right now. The 18th of March. You just released it forever. You take no account of any evil done to it. Pay no attention to a suffered wrong. The love of God. David's. David's. Hallelujah. Just 10 more seconds. Just release. When, when the hot air balloon's got to go higher, it's got to release something. It's got to let go of stuff. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Had a lady come down in Bradenton, Alfredo's church. We were there for nine weeks in, in his church. And a lady came down. She came from the back. It was treasure night. I said, go get a treasure. People left home. Kids came with their Nintendo. Five-year-old kids shaking and trembling. I watched kids come with their soccer cleats, put them on the stage. And the Lord, I used to play soccer. So the Lord said, go buy him pair, best pair of cleats. Tell me meet him in the... I saw a guy come in with his ladder. He was a construction guy. It was the only ladder. Before he got to the back of the room, somebody bought him another ladder. But this lady came, and she was going, ah, ah. She came down, and she had something in her hands. And, and she got down, and, and she was just shaking. It was the, her, her brother was murdered in her arms in this coat. The coat had its blood still on it. She couldn't forgive. She couldn't forgive the murderer because it's happened right in front of her eyes. But in that atmosphere of God, she chose. She chose to just cut the, the piece of garment and go like this to the enemy. Come on. Are you with me tonight? I know people don't see revival in that, those terms. That's why, that's, why, that's, why they, that's why they crucified Jesus and then kept on praying for, for revival to come. Because it came in a package that the world couldn't understand because God doesn't work as man works. God works in a different dimension. That's the place. Come on, just be seated a second. Just, wow, well, feel the Holy Spirit. So, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where this church is going, where you're going, and where your assignment is, we don't just come and just preach messages. We got we, 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 we press into heaven. So I'm here for a reason. The apostle brought me in for a reason. I have to come alongside. The gifts come alongside. I'm not here to do my own thing. And I said, God, and I knew I could feel the destiny of this church and, and what the assignment is on this church. Amen? So how many feel that when you're here? That's why you're here. There's a massive assignment church up the road if you want a regular church you want to just go worship sing some songs have a go, go ahead you can go there you could leave the same way every sunday but this church has a has a huge assignment and you're going to need that piece right there remember that piece cutting the end, cut, cut cutting the cloth there The Lord spoke to me while I was standing here what message to share, and I, I've got to obey. I just want to release a short word over you. Whew. Now, they carried me out the last three nights. Last night, I could at least feel my legs a little bit. 
That's the worst thing that could happen to you tonight is they carry you out of here. Amen. Sometimes people are out three, four, five, six hours. We, we've showed up in the morning time and, and they're still there from the night before. I shared a story about a, a lady that was laid out for 11 days. No food, no water, no bathroom. But all the tumors in her stomach were drying up. The, the, the Lord does surgery on our life. Amen. And the anointing is real. And, and the more you're under the anointing, the more you're going to change. The more you're under the anointing, the more you're going to change. And this is the, um, um, the, what the Lord told me to share tonight. I, want to sh I saw a mountain. I want to share on two mountains. I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. If you help me, I'll be quick, quicker tonight. I need some help. Here's a good Spanish one. I don't know if you know it. You know, it's called Este Callando. You know it? You could probably learn to play it in a few minutes. How many, how many of these guys are such a blessing? Amen. Thank God for them. This worship team keeps playing and playing and playing. And thank you to all the people that are working. The workers have been here till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning here. And uh, with joy. And that reflects, that reflects you, man of God. They didn't do it as a chore. They did it with joy. Like everyone, every one of the ushers, this is a blessed house. I mean that. Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus came into the coast, it's, it's Saturday night. Amen. They took me home last night. To, I, I'm staying at the Kima Boardwalk. That place was packed. People are partying. Hello. I thought, hold on, maybe I shouldn't have ended so early. But I, 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 I was gone, so I had no choice. So we can, Matthew chapter 16, when, we only have two more nights with you. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some you say you are John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he said to them, Who do you say that I am? We should have a vastly different understanding of Jesus than the world. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. Everybody say, Simon. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto you. But my Father which is in heaven. Now that's a good note. How many of you have grown in the Lord? That means there was things that you didn't see. Everybody put your hand back here like this. There's things in our life we can't see. That's why I get you around good people. Come on, that can help speak into your life. Everybody should have somebody over them. Everybody should have people beside them. And everybody should have people under them. It's called the cross. Amen. You're being poured into. you got people sharpening your iron, and you're always pouring into somebody else. But remember this, that God has to reveal things to people. You could shout at people. I Listen, I've tried it. I tried it. You can shout at people, and you say, why don't they get this? Like, come on, why don't they get this? And Unless God reveals it, we are so much better if we pray for people than complain about people. And even in our marriage relationships, take it to God in prayer. Come on. I'll go. We could be my wife or husband. You'll get to meet Kim. We're married 27 years and three beautiful girls. And God called us. It's a unique lifestyle. I'm, I'm away 200 and. 60 days a year. They're with me all summer and they're with me on holidays and spring break and you can count the days down to summer. It's not easy. I leave here for Dubai, for Abu Dhabi, places the gospel doesn't even go. And um, 
But sometimes, you know, I'll go to respond in, in a marriage relationship, and the Lord, the Lord will just tug me and say, oh, no, there's three people in the relationship, right? Husband, wife, and God. It's better to just go to God on stuff. Most times God tells me it's my problem. Come on. But always pray. Always pray. If, if, if Jesus prayed all the time and Paul prayed all the time, you probably should pray. Amen? A house of prayer. Let me get on with this. Watch this. That was for somebody. God knows every answer you got. Just pray. Press into him. Communicate with him. Talk with him. But my father, which is heaven, he says, you are Peter, and upon this rock, you are Peter, and upon this rock, the literal uh, Greek says, and I'm going to call you Peter, Simon, but you will be Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Raise your hand if you're with me tonight still. Raise your hand if you used to party late in the world. Come on. All right, we got you tonight. Amen? You got to go harder for God than you did for the enemy. Like, let people go crazy. They party all night long through the night, 5 a.m. I'm from Miami, so we have Miami Beach. The clubs start at 2 a.m. They go to like 6 or 7 a.m. And then when people get saved, they got to go to bed by 9 (laughs) o'clock. I was going to call Apostle late last night. It was 1.30. I go, I better not call. He didn't get back until 3 o'clock. I could have called him. <laughs> I should have known better. <laughs> this is the first time we see the word church in the Bible. We're introduced to church. Everybody say church. This is the first time the word ecclesia or ecclesia comes. It's the first introduction to it. Of course, there was types and shadows of God's gathering many times in Scripture. But this is the first time that Jesus introduces the concept of the ecclesia, the called out ones to be sent in. And the first description, watch this, the first description. Everybody say first. Everybody say first. The first description about what he he says, I am going to build it. God is the builder of the church. God is the master builder of the church. If the Lord doesn't build the house, they what? Labor in vain. So God's got to be in it. God's got to put his hands on it. Could you say amen? But then it says, and I will build my church and the gates of hell. When God builds something, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The first time we see the concept of church, it's an offensive church. It's a church of people not coming to sit. It's a church that's invading. He didn't say, and I'm going to build my church and they're going to hang out in the gates of heaven and it's going to be so awesome. It's going to be beautiful. They're going to love one another. They're going to worship. They're going to have lattes. They're going to, it's going to, no, the first, that's all good. But he said, the first thing, he said, I'm going to build something and I'm going to tell you what it's going to do. It's going to invade the very gates of hell. They tell about people, you know, how many like sports? Anybody like sports? And, um. They said there's a concept in sports that, you know, defense wins championships. The best defense wins. And I've always argued that. I said, no, 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 no. Offense wins championships. The more in hockey, the more pucks you put in the net, you win. In soccer, the more balls that go, or football, whatever you go by, the more times that ball goes in the net, you win. In baseball, the more time you run around, that guy was running around here tonight. I don't know what the score was. Where is he? Is he here? Like fifth, it was 50 to nothing or something. You, he was hitting home run after home run after home run. <laughs> that was awesome. That was more than just healing, brother. You're going to run for God. Just going to run. You run. You run. You run with fire. The man of God caught fire. He outran a chariot. Increase it, God. Increase it. 
the first concept we see is this entity being built by the hands of God and it invading. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's an offensive church. Do you know why we look like we're losing the game? Because we're the only ones, because the devil's the only one playing. The multitudes are in the valley of decision, it says. Multitudes and multitudes are in a valley of decision. Look prophetically in the Old Testament. They were all, it was always about the valley. The val- they were on the sides and the battle was done in the valley, right? I'm Italian, I need some hands. But it says they're in a valley of a decision. They don't know which way. And you know what? When a little birdie is hungry enough, you can put, a, a, they think it's a worm, you can put a nail, the little birdie will go. He'll eat the nail because he doesn't know the difference. That's why they accept the false and the fake because they've never been introduced to the real. How do I, how do I know? Because this is, listen, listen. We'll share some more testimonies tomorrow night. We did last night. Listen, almost seven, almost 70 people came to Jesus today on the board, right, right around boardwalk and mall. There's, there's almost 200 people saved in a few hours over the last days. Most are for the first time. We're just in the beginning stages of this uh, uh, thing. We don't even know what we're doing. Some of us, let me tell you, this thing is going to increase and increase and increase. And you know what we're saying? Devil, no, no, we're we're in the game. We're in the game. We're going to preach the gospel. Everybody say gospel. Come on, listen. Johnny Sanchez, look at this, 20 years old. Stephanie gave her heart to Jesus. uh, 15-year-old Jesus born again today. Kibben, born again today. 20-year-old Michael Diaz, born again. These are first time. This is a one rededication here. Giovanni, 20 years old. 49-year-old Orlando, 20-year-old Jerry. Uh, these are all saved at the mall. They stopped in a mall and they prayed, dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Here's addicts that were saved. Addicts. Wow, somebody, look at this one. Vincent, born again today, being deployed next week. Wow, abroad. Lord, watch over him, protect him. Blood of Jesus be all over him. Give the Lord a shout for just just short of 200 souls. Come on, Houston. Hallelujah. Glory. People, lives, families. This word will not return void. It will accomplish what is sent for it to do. One plants, another waters, and then God gives an increase. They're coming. They're coming. Just be seated quick. You ready? Watch this. And I'm going to give you the key. I can do this quick. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Imagine getting this prophetic word. He puts it out. Whom do men say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter's that up and down guy, right? He's just, but he's always going for it. God chose a guy that's always going for it. You can't move a ship that's stuck. Oh, you go by NASA and you go by the water there by Kima, there's some boats that are like on the side like this. God has to move a moving ship. Amen? And thank God for Peter. He's like, Lord, if it's you, I want to walk on water. I want it. If it's available, I want it. If you could do it, I could do it. Come on. Who's got keys here? Quick, quick. Who's, 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 who's got the, who's the, where's the janitors that have the big keys? How many, how many keys you got, Ash? A bunch? Six. All right. I need, who's got the big set of keys? My, what you got, my brother? Go ahead. A lot of them? Oh, this is not. Okay, nice. This looks like a nice car. Where is it parked? <laughs> he says, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Everybody say keys. He says to Peter, imagine this. I'm going to give you the keys upon this rock. I'm going to build my church. Simon means the one that hears something. Put your a hand on your ear. Simon. Peter, your name is Simon. But, uh, and, of course, they had two different names. It was two different languages. But he said he never called him Simon again. Simon Bar-Jonah, of Jonah. He said, uh, 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 you're going to go from the one that hears something to the rock to the Petra, to the Petros, to the rock. And I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. These are serious keys. 
And it says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, in, in earth first, then it happens in heaven. Imagine getting that word. Imagine being in the prayer line and you got, I'm going to build my church on you. I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Well, imagine that. And then the Lord says, now don't tell anybody. Now all of a sudden, watch this. From that time forth, follow the word. Matthew 16, verse 21. From that time forth, Jesus began to show his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things. Of the elders of the chief priests and scribes. Isn't that interesting? He didn't say the world's going to tear me up. The Roman soldiers and the centurions are going to whack me and the politicians and the uh, Democrats or the Republican. No, he says, watch this. The chief priests, the scribes are going to kill me. Religion is going to kill me. But I'm coming up again on the third day. And, and watch this. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from you, Lord. No way. This shall not be unto you. Now just picture this conversation. Raise your hand if you're still with me. Come on. This is going to touch you tonight. These people are going to be changed forever tonight. You're going to step over tonight. That's what the man of God said. You're going into another dimension tonight. I want it. You want it. Listen to what he says. He says, I'm going to give you the keys. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. He didn't realize he was getting a key right here. And so the Lord said, guys, watch this. Here's the combo. You ready? Guys, I'm going to have to go through some hell. I'm going to have to go through some stuff. I'm going to die, but I'm coming back up. I'm going to suffer hell. I'm going to suffer hell like nobody's ever suffered. I wonder if he told him in detail, I'm going to be hemorrhaging. There's going to be blood coming out of my pores. It's going to be almost a medical condition. That's how much suffering I'm going to do. And I'm going to be killed by religious people. But I'm coming back up. And Peter goes like this, no way. I'm not going to let nothing happen bad to you. No way. Now, if you just take that conversation for face value, it doesn't look that bad, right? Here's Peter and who he loved. The who he loves is saying, uh, uh, I'm going to have to suffer and die. Imagine your, your spouse coming, your, 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 your kids coming to you saying, I'm going to have to die, suffer all kinds of stuff. It's going to be painful. It would be a natural response to say, I'm not going to let anything happen to you. No, no, no. You hang with me. Come on, raise your hand. But he didn't understand God is operating in a different dimension. And he says these words that are mind-blowing. You ready? How many want the keys to the kingdom right here? I was in church my whole life. I never got this key. Nobody ever taught me this. I heard sermon after sermon, youth after youth, revival after revival. Nobody ever taught me this. Nobody ever taught me to die. That's why I didn't. And he says, watch this. Jesus' response is, thank you, Peter. I needed that reminder. I, I, nothing bad's going to happen. No, nothing bad's going to happen. No, no, no. His response was like, ready for this? Mind-blowing. He says, get behind me. What's he say? Who does he say? You talk about the cuss word of all cuss words, the worst word, the worst word you could ever, not a cuss word, the worst word you could ever, Satan, the father of it all. Get behind me, Satan. For watch this, for, 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 for you are an offense to me. Do you know what it literally means? You are in my way. You are in my way. Watch this. For you savor not the things that be of God, but that be of man. The conversation looks normal. I'm not going to let nothing bad happen to you. Be it far from me. Not on my watch. Not on my watch, God. And he says, get behind me, Satan. You're in my way. That kind of thinking is in my way. See, he didn't get the kingdom. The disciples are walking with Jesus. Catch this. Please, please catch this. Do you hear anything else I say? He's teaching this. And you've got to lose your life to find it. They're not getting it. 
They're getting tough. They're like, whoo, man, man, the devils are subject to us. Man, there's fire. There's all kinds of stuff going on. And Jesus is going, look, you got to deny yourself. You got to take up your cross every day. And they're not getting it. You know how I know? Because I didn't get it my whole life. You know who else didn't get it? Ready for this? Lucifer, Satan himself. Satan himself. He says, watch this. Five times, I'm going to ascend. And I'm going to be, come on, point up. I'm going to be like the most high God. I'm going to be like him. How many want to be like him? Satan says, I'm going up there. I'm going to ascend. I'm going to ascend. I'm going to sit on the mountains of the Lord. I'm going to sit on the mountain. I'm going up. Come on, everybody point up. But because he wanted to go up, he got sent down from I beheld Satan falling like lightning because when you, uh, uh, when you try to exalt yourself, you get humbled. But if you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. This is a kingdom of God key right here. Satan didn't get it. And because he wanted to go up and be, you want to be like God? You want to be, that's what the cut, that's what the clothing cut is. That you want to be like God, David? This is what it is. You want to be a king? You want to be great? You want to be like God? Because that's God's desire for you to be like him. But there's so many people, they think Jesus' greatness is what he, it was he, what he did. No, his greatness was who he was. So they want to do all the stuff. They want all the fire. They want all the power. They, they're flowing this. And they don't want to do and be what he was. The glory of God didn't come on Jesus. It came from Jesus. It came from Jesus. Catch this. Come on, raise your hand if you're with me. Satan didn't get it. You know who else didn't get it? The Jews. 480 prophecies concerning Messiah. Everybody do this one. 480. Everybody put it up. 480. Things like this. He's going to come into, uh, uh, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. He's going to be raised in Nazareth. He's going to come into the city on a donkey. 480 prophecies concerning Yeshua, Messiah. Guess what? The probability that one man could fulfill eight of those prophecies, eight, eight, be at the right place at the right time, the probability was 35 million to one that any human could, could, be, could fulfill eight of those. The probability that somebody could fulfill 48, just 10% of the Messianic prophecies, you ready for this, was one, do a one, and keep on doing zeros. One and do 300 zeros. One to the 300th power to one. Catch, catch this, saints of God. The probability that one man on earth could fulfill 10% of the Messianic prophecies was one to the 300th power to one. So how in the world did a people that pray every single day go, come on, come, come to Israel with me. And you go and we'll take you to what's called the Wailing Wall or what's left of the Western Wall or, or the temple and you'll see people put notes and they'll put prayer and you'll see the men on this side praying and they're praying. You could go in the middle of the night. People are praying. I mean, they're praying. Woo! In the daytime, they're going, come, come on. I, I, I was an owl. I thought, oh, I'm weird. I'm weird until I got to Israel and I saw Muslims ready to blow themselves up for God, their God, and, and Jews just praying three times a day, Muslims praying five times a day, and always thinking to myself, wow, we're trying to get people to the National Day of Prayer in America. Can't get people to turn off their Netflix to come worship their Lord and Savior who died for them. You got people that spend more money on a plasma TV, come on, or a car battery than they'll ever give to the kingdom. They'll spend more on a house, more on a boat, more on this, more on this, more on this, more on this. Come on. And we want to wonder why the world's in the condition it is. Raise your hand if you're still with me. I, I got to hurry. But I had to release this. God said, ready? The Jews don't get it. Why? Because they were looking for a lion, but he came as a lamb. He came in a way 
They were ready for a slaughtering king. That's what Palm Sunday will be. They were ready. Hosanna, they're ready. Come on, just smoke this place. Just smoke this place. And even people didn't understand what he's coming into the city. He's coming to die. Come on, put your hand on your heart. Christianity is about dying to yourself. It's about dying to everything this world has. I didn't get it either. Peter didn't get it. He's hearing all this teaching, and he doesn't get it. Turn over to Luke chapter 9. Quick, quick, quick. Do this quick. Luke chapter 9. Do this 9. And Jesus is teaching the same thing again. Stay with me. I promise this will bless your life and help you. I've been in church my whole life. I've seen lots of Christians. I've seen lots of stuff. Jesus is teaching in verse 22, the Son of Man will suffer many things, be rejected of the elders. She priests, cries, and they never says that, that the Romans will have issues with him and, and, and the lost will have issues and the adulterers will have issues. No, it was, these, it was these religious people. And then he's saying, watch this, if any man will come after me, Luke 9, verse 23, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow him. Whoever going to save his life will lose it. Whoever will lose his life for my sake shall save it. What is a man advantage if he gain the whole world, lose himself or cast away? Whoever's ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed. He's teaching this. And watch this, watch this, verse 28. And it came to pass eight days after these sayings. Everybody say sayings. After these words that is being preached to his disciples, they're not getting it. And Jesus, Jesus is up on the mountain with Peter and John. And they went up to the mountain. Everybody say it loud, mountain. The Bible says in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be established. And they will say, come, let us go up to the mountain. He will teach us his ways. They went up to the mountain. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And the raiment or the clothes were white and glistering, flashing with the brilliance of lightning. Jesus, when you pray, stuff happens. How many believe in prayer? You get in the presence. You get, man, stuff is happening. And there he is talking with Moses and Elijah. What a conversation this is. Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, who appeared in glory. Everybody say glory. And spoke it of his decease. What did they speak of? They spoke of his decease, which he should accomplish. Everybody say accomplish. It was an accomplishment when you die at Jerusalem. But Peter and them that were with him, heavy with the sleep, they were awakened. And when they saw his glory, the two men then stood with him. Imagine that, Peter's sleeping. And he wakes up, and there's Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And it came to pass as they departed, Jesus said, Master, it's good for us to stay here and make three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. Not knowing what he said, it was so glorious on this mountain. Come on, everybody say mountain. Come on, everybody point over here, mountain. This is what a glorious mountain this is. What This is, this is Jesus there and, and, and some of the leaders uh, for God, Moses and Elijah. And Peter is so enamored by this, right? And he's like, let's just make three tabernacles and let's camp out here because it's like, this is amazing stuff here, right? And then a voice interrupted Peter as he's sharing. Let's just stay here. Let's just stay here on this mountain. And the voice said, watch this. This is my beloved son. Hear him. Hear him. Eight days after these sayings that Jesus is teaching this, this message of the kingdom of God that doesn't process in the human understanding. And he's saying, if you want to find your life, you got to lose it. But they didn't get it. And they're on the mountain now. And they're like, this is so awesome. And the Lord interrupts, cuts Peter right off and says, listen to him. There's something in the words of Jesus that actually is, will give us access to that mountain. But put your hand on your heart tonight as we begin to close this. Watch this. Everybody wants this mountain. Everybody wants revival. Everybody wants a move of God. Everybody wants to see cities and they, everybody wants this mountain. This is what we want. We want the glory of God. We want to see the radiance of God. I've been crying out for it 25 years every single day. But there's another mountain. There's another mountain. 
There's two mountains. One is this mount of transfiguration. And this other mountain is called Mount Calvary. Not everybody wants to go there. I'm going to have to suffer and die, guys, but I'm coming back up. Lord, I'll never let it happen to you, Peter. Lord, I'll never let it happen to you. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You're in my way. You're in my way. You're not thinking right. You're not thinking right. You're in my way. You're an offense to me. You're thinking about man's ways. You're not thinking about what's important to God. And Lord, I'll die. So watch how the story ends. Luke 22, and we'll close. You ready where it ends? There's a conversation that Peter is having with the disciples. This is the end of the story. Luke 22. This is the last moments. And guess what the story is? It says in verse 24 of Luke 22. Come on, look at it. They're having a, a, a conversation. You ready for this? They're having a conversation. Who's going to be greatest? Everybody point up. Adam didn't get it either. He said, if you eat this, you eat this, you're going to be like him. Come on, everybody point up. Because he wanted to go up, it says, I saw from dust, you were from dust, you'll return. This is the kingdom of God. You want to go up on this mountain? Listen to this. They're having a conversation. Who's going to be greatest? Who's going to be the top guy? Who's got the biggest church? Who's got the greatest man? Who's the top dog? Who's, who's, and, and the Lord goes like this. Watch this. He goes, uh, Peter, can I see you a second? <laughs> and he says, Peter, Satan has desired to have you. I want you to look at me tonight. What God has put in you, in the atmosphere that you've been around, Satan is after you. This life is all heaven. It's all hell, too. Read Paul's writings, whipped, shipwrecked, beaten. No wonder he had a revelation of what crucified with Christ, and not I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Death is working in me, so life is pouring in you. These temporary afflictions are but light, but they're only just preparatory for the glory of God that will be revealed in my life. When I decrease and God's increasing, stuff is happening. Come on, raise your hand. So that's why when you get... When you get persecution, you go push, you push even further. When you get attacked, you go right after the enemy. You resist. The word resist means you push the hell out of the devil. Push hard back. You know, there was a Rocky movie. You ever see Rocky? It was a hundred Rocky movies, right? And this amazing thing is everyone watch Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3. You wonder how Rocky can even talk because he walks out with his hands down. Now, I'm not a fighter. My dad fought while he was in the Navy. I'm not a fighter, but I know the, the least is that if somebody's pushed punching in the face, you should probably block it. But Rocky goes out and he just goes, come on, how many ever seen the Rockies? Just boom, 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 round one, round two. Boom, boom, he's getting, he doesn't even put his hands up. And he's just getting beaten to a pulp, beaten to, and you're thinking to yourself, come on, Rocky, like, and all of a sudden that, that, that music score, that composer starts coming up, and Rocky all of a sudden gets feisty enough, and he decides, I'm going to swing back. <laughs> and he swat, and then the music comes up, and then Rocky starts, and the crowd cheers, come on. It was like the moment he started hitting back, his enemy stopped hitting him in the face. Watch this as we close. Help me, God. Is anybody getting anything out of this tonight? I knew I took a little bit extra time tonight, but I'm telling you, I want to deposit this in you by the Holy Ghost. Who's going to be greatest? Satan has desired to have you, Peter. But I prayed for you. He tells him before that the kingdom of God doesn't work. If you're going to be greater, you got to be least. You got to be. You got to. You want to be first. You got to be last. You got to be. You got to be. You got to. You got to die, Peter. And then he, he says, "Watch this. I appoint you this kingdom." But I'm praying for you, Peter. Ooh, that's all you need praying for you is Jesus. That your faith fail not. And when you, watch this phrase, and when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. And I'm sure Peter's response was probably like, converted. Don't you think Thomas needs a conversion? Thomas doubts whether you even exist. You know who needs a conversion? Judas. Talk about a conversion. His pockets need to be converted back. I'm Peter. I'm your guy. Remember the prophecy? 
Remember, I'm the guy. Remember the walk on water thing. Remember, 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 remember I'm, I'm Peter, the, the rock thing. I get, invade the gates of hell. I'm your Peter. I'm your guy. It's all true, Peter. But something's got to happen to you first. Watch this. So Peter says, uh, Lord, I'm ready. Put your hand on your heart tonight. And this is the question. Are you ready? Are you ready for what's about to happen? The Lord told me, get people ready. Make ready a people. Are you ready for this? Lord, I'm ready. Watch this. To go to prison. Everybody say prison. And die. And you would have think the Lord would have said, that's awesome, Peter. You know what he says? Watch this. Before the cock crows twice, you'll deny me thrice. He says, before that you'll die for me, before the night's out, you'll deny me. So watch what happened. He says, no, I'll never deny. I'm sure that was an intimate. Con- no, I'll never deny you. You will. Peter, uh, Lord, Lord, I'm your guy. Peter, stuff's got to happen. How many have a prophetic word over your life? Come on. I had a prophetic word of my life. I had a visitation of Jesus 14. I've had some things, but I'll never would have fulfilled it. I thought God has to do it in me first before he can do it through me. He can only do to the level that he does inside of you that he can do through you. And he says, before the cock crows twice, I'll deny you three. And, and, and so the next picture was this. They're out in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus goes to Peter. Ready for this? Peter, pray with me. Guys, pray with me. And he goes and he, he prays. I just said drops of blood, hemorrhaging. This is a stress. This is a serious. This is the most serious moment of Jesus' ministry. I mean, we're in another serious moment on the earth right now. And they're talking World War III. Come with me to Poland. Come with me to Ukraine. I've been all over, a Russian border, all over. You know, this is no joke. This is no game. I sat with a guy just recently. I knew him for 25 years. His house was half blown up. His neighbors, he watched his neighbors blow up. People that he loved next door to him blow up. Human beings. This is no joke. This is real. Everything that's happening is happening. Listen to this. He says, Lord, I'm ready. Peter, you're not ready. So here they are in the garden. This is the intimacy. This is the prayer moment. This is the the upreach part. And guess what, Peter? Ready? The guy that's ready to go to prison. Everybody say prison and die. Guess what he's doing? He's out, man. He's out. Somebody that's sleeping, their eyes are closed and their mouth is shut. And so Peter comes, uh, Jesus comes back and wakes him up. Peter, you can you not tarry one hour? You said you'd die for me. Couldn't tarry one hour. And he goes and prays again. And guess what? He comes back to Peter. And guess where Peter is again? He's out again. He took too many Advil PM or something. He's out. And Jesus comes and says, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Wake up, Peter. Pray that you enter not into temptation. This is a serious moment. And Jesus goes and prays again. His greater, this is his Lord. This is his Savior. And he comes back. And then while his Lord and Savior is saying, come on, wake up. Come on, stay up. This guy is out. The head of the church, he's out. He's sleeping. I share my testimony. I was sleeping. I was in my own world. My eyes were shut. My mouth was shut. And all of a sudden, you know how Peter wakes up? They arrest Jesus. His first denial was this way. Everybody do this. Come on. His first denial is this. There's no intimacy. There's no prayer. There's no cry. And they wake Peter up. He gets woken up by this noise. What's the noise? They arrest Jesus. And they arrest Jesus. And Peter wakes up out of his slumber. And he sees this. And he goes and he grabs his knife. And he slices the guy's ear off. Because he's not going to let. And I'm not going to let nothing happen to you. Peter, I'm going to have to suffer. i got to die. i got to go in the ground. I'm not letting nothing happen to you. Peter doesn't get it still. And so he wakes up and he grabs a knife. And he goes, and he slices the guy's ear off. But Jesus operated in a different dimension. And if we're going to win this, and we are, 
we got to operate like Christ. And he went and he pulled the guy's ear on the ground and he healed the very guy that was coming to kill him. And he probably looked at Peter and said, you don't get it, Peter. You don't get it. As they arrested Jesus, Peter's following. You know, what does a follower look like? They go to church. They work. Yeah, that's part of it. Peter's physically following. He's physically following. But all along the way, he's got his mouth shut. Were you with him? No. Were you with him? No. Sorry, I'm from New York. I, I never. It was like five years in my ministry doing that thing. And I said, look, I never seen a rooster. I'm sorry. I never seen one. And the next night, a guy came down with the offering, and he came down, and he gave me a rooster. <laughs> somewhere in the Midwest, I got a pet rooster somewhere. I said, hey, uh, this is awesome. Can you just take, can you take care of him for me? If I'm back in town, I'll come see him, and I don't know, what do you do, pet him or, what, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do. How could it do? You would have thought Jesus would have remembered. Raise your hand if you're still with me. Come on. I didn't want to preach this because I knew it was going to be a little intense and a little long, but the Lord told me to do it. So I got to do it. I got to obey. Oh, even if I'm doing it for me. Amen. Now listen to this. You would have thought Jesus would have remembered. Peter would have remembered. You'll, deny before, you'll die for me? Really? You're my guy? Yeah, I'm your guy. I'll go to prison and I'll die for you. I'm ready. I'm ready. If we come to the church and we say in Houston, who's ready? Everybody. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. He says, really? No, you'll deny me tonight. And you would have thought that conversation, if it was, he'd have remembered the co- when the cock came, he would have been like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. See, God gave him two crows. But he's so in his own world. That was my testimony. That was me. I was, he's so in his own world, he doesn't even hear the cock crow the first time. And he keeps on going. And he said, were you with him? No, I was He denied him. And as soon as he spoke, cock a doo doo And the Bible says that the Lord turned. Everybody touch your eyes. It's the awakening. And when Peter saw, everybody touch your other eyes, how he had denied his Lord. The Bible says that he hit the deck and Peter wept. Peter, Peter, you're going to get converted. Lord, I'm ready. No, Peter, something's, come on, put your hand on your belly now. Well, Tommy, I'm ready. No, things got to die. There's more that's got to die. There's more attachment to the world. There's more stuff. It's got to die. It's got to die. Peter, you're going to fulfill it. You're going to hit every prophecy. Every word is going to come to pass in your life. But there's some stuff that's got to happen inside you first. It's got to happen in you first. God's got to do it in you. If you could just die, if you could just lose your life, if you can let go of it, if you could just, you, you'll find life more than you ever. No, no, he didn't get it. But he got it. He got it when he saw it. Let me tell you, Peter's conversion didn't come. It didn't come with a pat on the back sermon. It didn't come from a a preacher screaming on TV, saying the Lord's going to bless thy, the Lord's going to, woo, glory. No, no. You know what it came from? The conversion of the head of the church that was going to be prepared to invade the gates of hell and be prepared to carry the glory. It came from a cut open his heart and a realization This is where you're really at. But this is where God wants to take you. And here's the good news. Ready finally for the good news part of the sermon? This is a different guy. He gets converted. Some of you are going to get converted tonight. Forever. Listen. Forever. When people catch this fire and God puts fire on your lips and you start winning the lost and you, this is, this is, this is the last frontier. This is why nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to talk to strangers. Fear of public speaking is the greatest. Nobody wants to do, nobody wants to stand here and cry day and night for daily bread for somebody else and then give it out and live your life completely unselfishly for the sake of somebody else and God's kingdom. Come on. But this is why it's the last frontier. This is why God said, you really want it? You got it. Re- I said, I really want it. You got to speak this then. You got you to, gotta, you can't be trying to be, you got to speak what I speak. 
And you got to tell, imagine walking around 21st century American feel-good church with a die-to-yourself message. And oh, by the way, let's go talk to strangers. But here's the great thing. You ready? This was Peter before his conversion. His eyes are shut. And his mouth is shut. And you didn't have enough money to pay to keep his eyes open. Or you didn't have enough money to keep his mouth, get his mouth open. But here's the cool thing. You ready? Acts chapter 1. Who's organizing the prayer meeting? This guy. Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost falls. Who's the guy that grabs Steps up. Sorry, sir, I got your keys all the way up here. <laughs> Who's the guy that steps up? It's Peter. These are not drunken as you suppose. Mouth's open now. Acts chapter 3, they're walking by the gate beautiful. They walk by every day. They saw this guy every day. Who stops and says, silver and gold, have I none such as I have? It, it's this guy. It's this guy. Acts chapter 4, who's calling them all over? And, and, and they're saying, listen, don't you preach in that name. And so who called the prayer meeting? This guy says come on and then this was the prayer you ready not lord bail us out not lord take care of that enemy lord he says that with all boldness we may speak your word who is it this guy not shutting up for anything they came over they preached the word so you know what they did they arrested them we told you and they arrested him they threw him in jail and they threw him in jail and said we told you not to preach in that name but an angel came and went like this. Go preach in that name. And they went out and they were preaching in this right there. And so they came and said, uh, magistrates, this, yeah, yeah, sorry. The guys you threw in jail for preaching in that name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. They're outside the jail somehow preaching in the name of Jesus. They said, what? So you know what they did? They said, we, we told you what? He said, whether it's right in God's eyes, you decide, but we ain't shutting up. I was once had my mouth shut. My eyes were shut, but I'm not shutting up for anything. So you know what they did? They whipped him. When you come with me to Israel, I don't know any other preacher does this one. I take you to the whipping post of Peter. I'll put your hands right up on the thing. And I'll say, let's see. Let's see. And just start weeping. Here's a guy, a fisherman, nobody. Bible says they beat him. I'm about to. They hit him and they beat him. And you know what? This is a different guy. This is a guy that got converted. You know why? He rejoices. Ready for this? That he's called worthy to suffer shame for his name. You know Peter's message there? Repent. Change the way you think. Now he's preaching the message he rejected. You change the way you think. And you know what happened? The Bible says the glory of God came, and the Bible says that they laid bodies in Peter's shadow. That at the very shadow, Peter. I thought you'd just go to a meeting. That's how we teach it in revival. Just go get the anointing. Just uh, the, 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 Tommy, uh, Rodney has the anointing. Just go get the anointing. Just go down there and just go, bing, boom. We got it. We got it. I got it. Well, that's how you get it? You just come and just, just, that's how you, you don't have to die. You don't have to put action to your life. You don't have to pay a price for it night and day, night and day. Just, just bing, bing. That's it. That's the American revival. Just McDonald's. Just bing, bing. I'll close with this. Raise your hand if you're getting anything out of this. He raised the dead. And guess what? He became everything God had him become. And the gates of hell didn't prevail. And the church exploded. And these are they that's turned the world. You know the last thing about Peter? The last thing? Do you know? Now, there's no actual proof of this. Actual. But, but it, there's, and so many people have spoken of it. So many first eyewitnesses spoken about Peter. And here it was. Peter was crucified upside down. You know what that shows me? He couldn't get in the ground fast enough. He couldn't get in the ground fast enough. 
give God your best shot. You know, we're coming back in September in this city, and we're going to come back. We're working with Apostle, and we're getting the mind of God, and we're coming back in January for the largest evangelistic crusade. I was going to play something tonight, but I'm going to hold it off for tomorrow night. And you'll see why this city is so important, and you'll see why this church is so important. You'll understand the greater plan of God about the city of Houston and what God wants to do in this city for this country. Lift your hands this week. Peter, you got to die. I'm ready to go to prison, Peter. You're not ready, but that day will come. They'll throw you in prison, but, but an angel will open the door. Just That's what the enemy doesn't want. He doesn't want you to open your mouth. He doesn't want you. That's the one thing he doesn't want. Don't teach in that name. Don't preach in that name. Just keep it to yourself. Keep it all to yourself. Stay in your little room, church people. Stay up on that mountain. Just stay in that glory. Just, just camp out there. Just, no, no, I must go to other cities. No, we must go, Peter. We must go. We must go into all the world. We must be salt and we must be light. We must go set captives free. We have to go, God. We have to set captives free. Lift your hands as we close tonight. Peter, you got to get converted. Church, you got to get converted. Didn't have enough money to, to open his eyes and open his mouth, but after he got converted, they didn't have enough money to shut it, enough power to shut it. No power in hell could stop it. Peter, in order for life, it's got to take death. You got to do it my way, Peter. Lift your hands if you'll do it the Lord's way. There's a way that seems right to men, but the end, but the end is destruction. But do it my way, the way of the Lord, the way of the Lord. give you my heart and my soul. I live for you alone, Jesus. Every breath that I take. I give you my heart. It's fire, my brother. I give you my soul. Who will, he says. Well, will you? He said to me, will you, Tommy? I said, I'm in. I will. I will. If nobody else will, I, I, I will. Fire! 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 It's what the fire does. It purifies. It burns. It burns all the stuff. All the stuff. All the stuff. We can't get it out ourselves. He burns it by fire. He's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. You got to die, Peter. You got to die so somebody else can live. You got to die. Teach him how 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 to die. Their time, their talent, their treasure, they're all they gotta they gotta give it all, no string attached, none, no thought for their life, none, no thought for their life, no thought for your life, no thought for your life, Tommy, no thought for your life, Tommy. Lord, I give you Fire. Fire's falling all over this room right now. Lord, have your way. Every breath, God. 
If you want this tonight, get out of your seat tonight. Get out of your seat, the Spirit of God. Fire. Watch this, quick, quick, quick. One man on fire. One teenager. of asphyxiation which means he couldn't breathe out anymore he couldn't give out anymore he couldn't pour out anymore he gave it all he gave it all every breath
fire. Nothing like a man or woman on fire. all over this room and the anointing right now goes through these airwaves this is the time this is the season church everything is ready everything is ready everything is prepared for you just die just go the final mile just go the last part eat the final pieces of the Lamb of God and you'll pass over just a moment in your presence part of that song it says I'll trade it all it doesn't matter what I have to do to know you Lord Lord I hunger for you don't be in a hurry die die you're gonna run but but you die first Pay a price nobody's willing to pay. Pay a price nobody's willing to pay. Lord, I hunger for Count a cost nobody's willing to count. For more of your presence. Go that mountain. For more of your praise. That's the way to the glory. More of your love. That's the way to the crown. It's hunger that hurts. It's the way of the cross. set apart called out called out I called you out of it but oh wow he's gonna raise you up and send you back into it it's a hunger that hurts Two mountains. De tu fragancia. Two mountains. De tu poder. But that one mountain. Hambre que duele. If you'll go that mountain. Que debilita. Oh, wow. Que desespera. Oh, oh, wow, 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 wow. Por ti. 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 The glory of God on my dear sister. This is a mama tasta. We're an enemy to be so caught on the we're an enemy umbra of us so cast that a minute. Oh God, oh Father, Father, Father. Yeah. 
Don't look back, don't look back, don't look back. Full speed ahead. Don't look back, don't look back. Don't look back. Full speed ahead. What's ahead is so much greater than what's behind. I'm out, I'm still caught. Can the heavy weighted press down? God just saturated as I saw their skin, their face, their bones, God. Oh! Church, you're going to carry the glory. The ark, the ark on the shoulders of sanctified priests all in must be carried on the shoulders sanctified priests Fragrance of God of your love. and the fragrance of it's God a hunger that burns. and the beauty of God that leaves me restless. It'll melt. Desperately chasing. It'll melt. After you. It'll melt. of David and you shall ascend the hill of the Lord and you shall run off the garrison of the Philistines in every home and every business the dead in Christ shall rise the glorious people Teach him that mountain. Tell me, teach him how to die. But Lord, it's it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard for me. But love makes it easy. That mountain. Tell him. It's the mountain of ascension. abides alone, it abides alone, but if it die, oh wow, oh wow, 
but if it died but when it dies oh wow what it shall be no tongue can describe what they shall be I save the best for last they cannot fathom Increase it, God. Increase it, God. Increase it, God.
presencia de tu fragancia de tu poder hambre que duele que debilita que desespera por ti tengo hambre de ti de tu presencia de tu fragancia, de tu poder, I hunger for you, for more of your
Express my need for you in 
much we need him. I hear it as a prayer. More than just a song, but it's a prayer. You're singing a prayer.
Nietzsche. We want you. All of you, Lord. All of you. Thank you. 
Amen. of the world to come. This is just the beginning. Heaven on earth. It's going to get sweeter. These are the days of the greater glory. The glory of the latter house. We thank Thank you, Lord. We thank you. What you're going to do with these men and women of God. In these last days. feeling that tonight. How many God spoke to you tonight? Just singing it to us. I want you. I need you. More than ever before, I love you. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning we'll be training. We're going to join the the crew here that goes Sunday mornings and share the gospel if you haven't been able to come and get trained, get get trained. We brought a small army this time. When we come back in September, we believe in that number is going to be around 40 Holy Ghost evangelists we, we bring with 
that we're believing for 100 by January 2024 when the first major crusade me and apostle go around and build this net the largest fishing net in America right now. There's a lot of stuff going on. So much spiritual activity is going on. Just remember, the best days are ahead for God's church. Don't be fearful. He's got you. <clears throat> We're going to just fly and soar over all of it living in the realm of God. Tomorrow night will be the, this is a short week for us. We, and frankly, we don't like to just stay away. Just, and you see, as you pour out in your life, God will give you more and more. It just increases and increases. It just gets, we've been 11 months in one place and the transformation is staggering. Here's the good news. You don't need me or this team to have revival. You carry it. You got it. Power of God's moving in this house in a special way. Something's happening in Houston. <sighs> Tomorrow night will be the finale. We're going to have an impartation at the end. We're going to pray for people. This anointing service tomorrow night will such as we have give every person in the body has a peace. We're going to release and impart that peace to you tomorrow night. And uh should the Lord tarry, we'll gather back in September. And, um, hallelujah. We've asked the apostle to come and come with me on some of these crusades. the largest evangelistic crusades in many of these cities history so we're calling this the largest endeavor this is already almost 20,000 churches are involved in across the world and we're taking our cities back we're taking our countries back amen there's something that happens when the gospel is preached. A strong man is bound and, and every devil flees. We're starting to see societal transformation. We have the police in some cities, the police. Sitting with police, the, the chief of police of major cities, and they're sharing, please go into these parts of the city. Or you go into this part of the city. So they can't fix the problems. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, they contain the heroin. And they openly do drugs and heroin, shoot needles. Look it up. You can Google it. It's unbelievable. And the, the meth and the uh, people just walk around like zombies all over the streets. And the cops are just surrounded. They said, we can't do anything about it. So we'll just contain it. But I mean, no, we, we can do something about it. And uh, we're in, I was in a place that was a prostitution rig in Providence. And the glory of God came in. 
And a year later, was a four-star restaurant by a Holy Ghost Christian. Buildings are being transformed. We're starting to see the largest sex trafficking bus, the largest drug bus. How many want to see a societal change? Not, amen. And we could do it. And you carry it. I see it. Tonight, before we close, I have no idea what time it is tonight. <laughs> I lost track of the service at some point. That's a good place to be. My Brazilian brother is here tonight, all the way from Nigeria. What a unique man of God. We thank you. We thank you, Pastor, for and I'll say what he said. He came to the pastor's meeting. And the Lord spoke to him. He said, I don't want to go to some no dead stuff. And I don't want to go to another one of these. He's invited to everything and everything. But the Lord spoke to him and said, come. Thursday, I really wish to be here every meeting, but where I'm staying is a little far. And on Thursday that I was here, I have a program online on Zoom. We started three years ago, every Friday, fasting and prayer. We never missed a day, a Friday, for the past three years. People joined from Dubai from Brazil, from Kenya, from Nigeria, a lot of people. And I felt on Friday after Thursday here, the administration was changed. And I want to let you know, you are not wasting your time. When you are in the presence of God, you don't give God's time. You will need to wait until God finish with you. And on Thursday I was here. I know we were having fasting on Friday. I was unable to eat. I was supposed to eat before 12. But we were here at 11.50. But I said, the food will perish. But there are some things that will never live your life. So I was unable to eat. Going, taking over another fast into Friday. And by the grace of God, next week Friday, people say we are going to have a section of prayers without time to. This next Friday. And then I felt the presence of God in this place. And I know what it means. It is not the amount of words or teaching, theological philosophies that can help you. It's this kind of thing that can help us. To tarry in the presence of God. And it's a blessing and it's a blessing to be here. It's a blessing for man of God. I pray for him all the way from Florida. And I post to prepare for this. And it is time for revival. Because when I was coming, God told me another revival is time. That was when Apostle invited me to, to join the pastor's meeting. I don't just go to any meeting anyhow. I'm busy. I'm too busy. But I pray, God, should I go? Am I wasting my time? <laughs> I pray to God for everything. And God said, showed me revival, deliverance revival is happening. Please let us embrace it. Once it happened like that, many people will have this time, this day, 
this week, this season, rewriting the history of their lives. That's how it will happen when revival starts. Many people, they will remember this day, you will conduct it in the next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, to greater things that is happening in your life. And I'm happy for, every, for your patience, for your understanding, because I know in this generation, everything is fast, fast. It's only when they're wasting their time, it's not fast. It's only Facebook that is not fast. It's only terror or watching that is not fast. But when it's important thing, fast, fast, fast. No, you need to do quick. You need to do quick. I'm going to wait. Thank you so much. And I believe the fire started. So let's continue to spread it everywhere. Thank you, Sir Joseph. Give him a big God bless. Amen. Doing it together. This is the most beautiful thing you're going to see when men and women of God come together. God's going to release a commanded blessing that we've never experienced before. Tonight, before we close, I want you to just look me in the eye. I want to give you an opportunity tonight. The Lord put me on a different journey. And he took me and he said, I want you to operate like this. And I want you to, you have to, I can't preach this message unless I live this message. I know a lot of people preach things, but they don't live it. But I, the real genuine anointing comes when you live it, and then you can speak out of that. That's what ministry is. It's the outflow of your life to somebody else. And this is a, a, it's a tough journey. It's a sacrificial journey for all of us, not just me. I get the attention because I'm the guy with the mic a lot, but the whole team, but the majority of our team is not here. They're coming to Houston. They're coming. I had wow, I had some barbecue today. Wow, I can we, we 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 got junk in Florida there. We just got So if somebody wants a good business, take Texas barbecue, bring it to Florida, please. Somebody. You're gonna make a ton of money. I'm talking there's nothing. And, and Mexican, how many Mexican folks we got here today? It's like, like my, South Florida has no Mexican foods. There's no Mexican restaurants. <laughs> I come to Texas, my jackets are a little tighter. <laughs> I think this button popped off here. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> But the Lord told us, pay your way in every city. Bring teams, bring people. It's cost millions of dollars to do. And, uh, but we will not compromise. We don't beat people up over the head. There's no gimmicks. There's no, I hope you'll catch that. This is real. But we rely on people's faith to sow into this. Somebody had to believe in Billy Graham. Somebody had to believe in Reinhard Bonnke. And so tonight, I'm going to ask you to give a, a seed into this harvest. Every day the gospel goes out. You're sowing into Dubai next week. You're sowing into a city called Abu Dhabi. Look it up. It's the place where the sheiks, there's billionaires. It's one of the most breathtaking places you'll ever see. It's come out of the desert. But they're beginning to open to the gospel. And uh, then from there, I'll go across Europe. We do this in Warsaw, Poland, Auschwitz. We have the first crusade in the history of Auschwitz. How many want to come on that one? I, I, learned, I was on the tour of Auschwitz. It'll blow you away. you never seen it. You can't. And I was overwhelmed, and I... I, I ran out of my own tour because the, the glory of God came on me. I ran, and, I, and the Lord showed me two things. He said, these devils that were on Hitler, Rommler, and all this, it was the most atrocious thing because they went in for a shower, and they gassed them. Kids, hundreds of thousands of kids, slaughtered with guns. 
I held a meeting underneath my feet were 39,000 dead Jews. No gravestone. They were underneath my feet. And I, we put up a tent. We preached the gospel. People were, there's hundreds of people laid in the glory on the bones. I said, death is going to produce life here. And the Lord said, these devils didn't leave the earth. They didn't leave the earth when Hitler died. They're still here. They're manifesting. But he said, look what people filled with a demonic spirit can do to the earth. How much more people filled with the Holy Spirit can do to the earth. Amen. And so um, we're doing this in Italy. My, my, my family, I'm 100% Italian. My dad's from the south. My mom's from the north of Italy. I waited 25 years. Could have had Ishmael's. And then all of a sudden, the entire nation of Italy just opened up. Just churches coming together saying, we have to, we have to get the gospel out. I'm going to land just at some point in two weeks in the Vatican City. I'll share tomorrow night a little bit about my little part before we pray for people. But the Catholic Church is going to be hit by the fire of God. The, the, the Catholic Church. You watch. Remember, you mentioned I mentioned it to you. Watch the Catholic Church in these last days and watch what happens. I'm not talking about the powers that be. The, the, I'm talking about the people. Amen. You're going to see hundreds of millions of Catholics just come in. My parents were saved in a Catholic charismatic. My dad was the most evil, wicked man. He threw my sister through the glass window. But three days later, he was invited to a Catholic church, and the glory of God hit my dad and knocked him on the floor. And he got up. He never touched another drink again, never touched another woman again. The only thing he did was cry out every night and preach the gospel every day. God changed my dad in one wind. So when pastors blowing wind on people and they're getting hit, that's how my dad, one wind, over. Whole family generation changed. <laughs> you may not be called to do this and go to J Tokyo, Japan, and Sri Lanka, and India. We're doing this in my brother's land in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, down in the south. We're doing this in Trinidad. We can go on and on these places, all across Canada, eight cities in Canada, and, of course, our beloved America. We're taking the fire of God across the United States. Tonight, I want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed into the gospel. And God said this, a hundredfold blessing. The only time in the New Testament. He said, for my sake and the gospels, anybody that's given anything for my sake and the gospels shall receive in this lifetime, in this lifetime, 100 fold. This is the soil that we have got to flex our muscles and say, we are going to reach people. I promise you we'll be the best of stewards. If we're not, I ask God, take us out of the ministry. We, every dollar goes into the gospel. Every dollar. And this team needs weapons right now. It needs stuff. We, nobody goes to warfare without their own expenses. So just close your eyes. I know you've been taught well. I'm drunk, by the way, and I'm drunk, so. Just ask God what you can sow. No, no, no push. No, no, no gimmicks. Just whatever God tells you to do, just do it. They needed wine, but he said, fill the pots up with water. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. The glory of God is here. The, the, the pure presence of God is here right now. It's, Father, thank you for your people. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this man of God. Thank you for all the years, all the tears. But thank you for this new season. And thank you, Lord, 
that a, a, a city is going to gather. And this net is going to be big, built and it's going to be filled and it's going to be filled and it's going to rip in half and it's and they're going to get boats and they're going to be filled. And we thank you, Lord, right now. Bless your people. We thank you for the financial windfall that's coming to the people of God. The wealth of the wicked laid up for the righteous to get the job done, to get the harvest done. We give you all the glory. God, give them creative ways. Give them deals. Give them favor. Give them alliances, opportunities. We thank you that everything they touch would prosper. Everything they put their hand to will prosper. Thank you. There'll be no lack in their life. No lack in any aspect of their life in their relationships, but they, Lord, every part of their life will shine forth the Shekinah glory of God. We thank you for it. And we give you all the glory. Multiply these seeds. We thank you that every need is met in Jesus' name. And every, ooh, thank you, Lord. Everybody said amen. The ushers will give you an envelope. You can sow, you make a check. I think they're making it. I'm not sure if they're making it to the church or the American Awakening. You can give by Cash App, Venmo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Young lady, how old, come here, how old are you? 13. Did you have a good night tonight? Did the Lord touch you? Yeah, it was good. You recommend it for others? You do? Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead. And uh, as the Lord leads you to give. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hug somebody tonight. Tell them you love them. Jesus loves them. And you're released. And be blessed and have a glorious night.